Hey guys, welcome back. So in this series of tutorial, I'm covering few of the important questions from Java variable length arguments concept or what we call where arcs. So each of the question that I'm going to discuss over here is actually a interview question or an SCJP or OCJP question. So today I'm also going to cover an another very important question over here. And these type of questions are really tricky if you never solved this type of question before. So I encourage you to watch this tutorial till end. Alright, so let's get started then. Alright, so now let's go for the next scenario. Alright, so this is going to be really really important. But trust me, it's really simple. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to create a method, let's say m1. And, and inside m1, I'm going to take a uh, few arguments let's say int a int b and int c so i have three different arguments over here and over here let's just give me a simple print statement here system dot out print ln and let me say it in int param of m1 method right Okay, so now let me create a, another method, which is a overloaded method. Let me say it M1 again. So the method name is going to be same in a overloaded method, but the argument will be different. And here I'm going to take the argument as byte type. So I'm going to use the var args over here, byte B I'll say, right? So let me give a space. So this is also going to work fine. And I'll also have a print statement here. So let me copy this out. Let me paste it over here. And let me say this in byte var arc param of m1 method. Okay. So right now I want to call this methods. Okay. If I want to call this method, these are non static method. First of all, I need to create the object. So my class name is var case. So var case c equal to new var case. All right. And I'll say. Uh, C which is my reference dot m1 and I'm going to pass um, Okay, I'm going to pass a number of byte type. Let's say let me declare the number here Let me say byte b equal to 10 or something and let me pass here uh, B which is value is 10 B and B All right, so now the value of B is 10, right? So I'm defining 10 over here so right now you have to guess which particular method is going to be get called. Is it going to be this method which takes three integer uh, values as the argument or as a parameter or JVM is going to call this particular method. Okay, so just have a guess. All right, so uh, most probably you might think, I say you might think that this particular method is going to get executed because in the last scenario I told you JVM always look for an exact match. So right now, we do not have any exact match. So I'm passing three byte values uh, in my M1 method. So we, and we do not have a method which takes three byte as a argument or as a parameter. So, so this method is not an exact match. So we can say this particular method will be get called by JVM, right? So now let me execute this particular program and let's check this out. Either this particular method is getting called or this one. All right, so let's check this out. So all right, so now let me compile this particular program. Let me say Java C uh, var case dot Java. This compiles fine. Now let me run it. So Java uh, var case. All right, so the answer that we got over here, or the output that we got over here, if you can uh, see it, let me zoom it a bit. Okay, so the answer is over here in int param of m1 method. Okay, so that means this particular method is getting executed. Now the biggest question, why and how, right? So now let me tell you the reason for it. All right, guys, so if you talk about this m1 method, this method is accepting three byte values, isn't it? And whenever JVM is going to execute this particular method and whenever it looks for all the method available now it doesn't find the exact match 
do we have a method over here which will which can handle this particular request which which accepts three byte value as an argument no we do not have a method like this but we have a method available uh, and this particular method is actually taking three integer value or three int value as a argument and this particular method is a varax method isn't it so you need to keep in mind one thing as i told you in the first tutorial the var arc method or the method which is having an argument of var arc types, this kind of method will always get the last priority. So JVM is going to give the last preference to this kind of method, right? So in such situation, what will happen? So whenever JVM is checking, okay, so the user is passing three byte value, but I do not have a method which can handle three byte value over here. At that time, JVM is going to check, is there any other method available here which can handle this particular values what i mean by that is is there any other method over here which can handle or which can store these byte values over here yes we do have a method over here called m1 so if you talk about this m1 we have the argument type as int and this byte can be stored inside a int isn't it so the b uh, this uh, byte value can be stored inside the int value right so what jvm is going to do over here jvm is going to promote these byte values to the next level okay so automatically this byte value will be get promoted to the next level and the byte can be stored inside the int right and we have a method available here which is taking three uh, int values as a argument and this bytes can be stored inside this int type isn't it so this particular method is going to be executed so we can say in this type of scenario when jvm does not find an exact match jvm is not going to uh, call this particular varax method directly before calling this particular method jvm is going to check whether there is any other method available here which can handle or which can store this particular byte values right and jpm is going to promote this byte values to the next level and yes in this case we have a method m1 which can hold or which can store this byte values here so the automatic promotion will happen and implicitly jpm is going to typecast this byte to int and is going to store inside this uh, a b and c right and the bad arc method will not be executed because jvm is always gives the last preference to this particular method m1 or this kind of method which have bad arcs as an argument all right i think the thing is clear all right so now you must be wondering why is that okay why we have a concept like this okay so the thing is uh, you have to understand a language need to be backward compatible yes let me repeat that again a language need to be backward compatible and backward compatibility means the older feature should get the first priority over the new feature all right so a language must be backward compatible and java is backward compatible so if you talk about this kind of method this is just a normal method right this is just a general method we can say and this particular method is not a normal method or not a general method this is a bare arc type method right and this th this kind of method we can define it from java 1.5 version and this kind of method we can define from java 1.1 version right so obviously this guy have more experience this guy does exist from java 1.1 version so this method will be executed and this method will be preferred over the over over this method right why because the old feature need to get the first priority and the new feature should get the least priority okay so this has happened to make a language backward compatible so if you want you can explore more about it all right so this is the reason why this particular method got executed in this particular scenario so i think i'm able to make you understand the concept but still if you have any questions you have if you have any queries don't forget to put that question in the comment section and guys thank you very much for watching this video in the next video we're going to talk about an another scenario and as i said each scenario is going to be really important in interview point of view so i encourage you to watch the next tutorial as well so guys i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye and happy coding and hope you'll have a wonderful day